Hello, today we will use EPWM module and generate sinusoidal PWM in TMS 320F28379D. And uh, we will use up down count mode for this operation. In up down count mode, the time based counter starts from 0 and increments until the period uh, value is reached. This period value is TBPRD. When the period value is reached, the time base counter decrements until it reaches zero and then it continues again like this. If you use this kind of mode, then the PWM frequency is 1 by uh, time PWM. This is the TPWM and this is nothing but 2 times TBPRD. So if TBPRD is 4, it is 8. 2 times TBPRD multiplied by time base counter. You can write this as uh, frequency of the clock divided by 2 into TBPRD. The frequency of the clock is 100 megahertz. And if we take the time based period count to be 2000, then uh, it is 100 megahertz divided by 4000, and that is nothing but 25 kilohertz. So, by changing this value of TBPRD, we can change the PWM frequency. The detail of enhanced PWM module can be found in technical reference manual. You can go to chapter 15 and in this chapter detail of uh, enhanced PWM modulator block is given. We will use the example file which we have used in the last exercise and we will modify that file to generate sinusoidal PWM. In the last exercise we have disabled the interrupt from PWM 2 and 3. In addition we have set the interrupt even count to 1. At every instant when the counter value goes to 0 we have an interrupt from EPWM1. When the interrupt comes, the code enters in this interrupt service routine EPWM1 ISR and execute the code. So we will write our sinusoidal PWM code at this place. The function update compare sets the compare value in the compare register and generate the PWM. Basically, these compare values are nothing but the reference signal values. So we have the peak of the carrier signal in TBPRD register and the reference signal needs to be updated in compare register. This is the carrier signal and this is the reference signal. The reference signal value is updated in the compare register. The counter register starts from TBPRD and goes to zero and then increments to TBPRD again. Whenever the compare register value is equal to the counter register value and the count is in down mode, we want the PWM signal to be high. And when it is in upward direction and compare register value is equal to the counter register value, we want the PWM signal to go low. This EPWM signal can be used as a gate signal for the top switch of the leg. So let us see how can we do this. So if we look at the initialized PWM block at this portion of the code, you can see set action. So in this function, whenever the timer is in up direction, there is an event when the counter value register is equal to compare register value. And at that event, the output of EPWM1A is high. However, we want the output at that event to go low. So we change this to low. Similarly, in this line, whenever there is a down mode in the counter and there is an event when the counter is equal to compare register value, the output A of EPWM1 will be low. But in down mode, Whenever compare register value is equal to counter value, we want it to be high. So we change this to high. Now, if we look at this line, this is for output B of PWM1. And whenever the counter is in up mode and compare B register is equal to the counter value there is an event and at that event the output gets high which is the invert of the previous operation and if you look at this line when 
counter is in down mode and the compare register value is equal to the counter value at that event output gets low again this is the invert of output a action so the output b of pwm1 is invert of output a so we can use this output b for turning on the bottom device of leg for this we can copy this section and uh, use it for pwm2 and pwm3 module as well similarly for pwm3 after the actions are set let us see how to change the compare register value so the compare value registers are updated in this function in this function of update compare epwm set counter compare value function is used to update the compare register value so we will use that code to update the compare register value this is for output a of a pwm module and this is for output b of a pwm module we can comment rest of the code here we can see that the compare register value is set to this variable and compare b register value is set to this value however we have set our action in such a way that we can use the same value in both the compare register so we change both the values to compare a value now you can see that the compare a value can be between 0 to 2000 2000 because that is the TVPRD register value we have taken. For sinusoidal PWM, the reference can be positive as well as negative value. So we have to offset the reference value by half of the TVPRD. So for this, we have to assign two parameters. First is reference and another is the value of the TVPRD register. Then calculate the compare A value and compare B value from these parameters. So the offset is added to the reference signal. So now the reference signal should be within plus minus 1000 in our case. And then we have added an offset of 1000. So minus 1000 will become 0 in compare A. And plus 1000 of reference value will become 2000 in compare A value. As we have updated the parameters in this function, so we have to modify the definition of the function also. We can do it here. Then we modify the call for the function as well. And we define reference A, reference B, and reference C for phase A, phase B, and phase C variable. We define them as global variable. For time being, we will assign some value between minus 1000 to plus 1000 to these three references. As we have disabled the interrupt for EPW2 and 3 modules, so we have to call the compare register update function for EPWM2 and 3 in this ISR only. Now we can run the code. and see the output. So I am showing the output of PWM module 1. You can see the channel A and channel B, they are complementary to each other. As the reference for PWM 1 module is 500, which corresponds to 1500 compare register value, which means the duty cycle should be 1500 divided by 2000, that is 75%. And you can see the blue curve that has a duty cycle of 75%. The reference for PWM2 module is 
minus 250, which means 750 is the value in compare register. That that means the duty cycle is 37.5. And if you see the output of PWM2 module, you can see the duty cycle is 37.5%. And this is the output of PWM3 module, where the duty cycle is 87.5%. Because we have said the reference 750, so compare register value is 1750, duty cycle will be 1750 divided by 2000. That is 87.5%. This is how we can set up the enhanced PW modulator block. Now we can change these three variables REFA, reference A, reference B, and reference C in such a way that they vary sinusoidally. So we comment them and write a code for reference A, reference B, and reference C to vary sinusoidally. This is the code for varying reference signals sinusoidally. This needs defining four variables. The definition of the variables are given here. In addition, we have to include math.h that is done here. Now let us look at the code again. Delta theta which is the function of fundamental frequency, PBPRD register value, and time period of the clock. This value of delta theta is added to the previous angle to get new angle value. The variable theta is defined as integer. It is a 16-bit integer. So it varies from 0 to FF, FF. If you increase it further, it will start from 0. So 0 corresponds to 0 degree and FF, FF corresponds to 360 degree. After 360 degree, it will start again from 0 degree. Once we have this theta value, then we can calculate reference A, B and C using this cos function. In this, another variable BM is assigned, which corresponds to modulation index. We have taken frequency equal to 50 hertz. We can save the file, debug and run it. You can see the output of port A and B of EPWM1. You can see it varies sinusoidally and they are complementary to each other. This is how we can program enhanced PWM modulator block to generate sinusoidal PWM. Thank you.